First Bubba gets up. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Thanks for joining us tonight on Bait Shop Talk. We got a very special guest with us. I want to go ahead and announce it today. We got Alex from 904 Fishing. Go Hold ahead on, and say everybody. hi to the people, Alex. Let them know what your channel's about and a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 904 Fishing. I just fish. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff around Jacksonville, bass fishing, saltwater fishing, a lot of shore fishing recently, and I'm hoping to get into kayak fishing. Nice. He's just got to get it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's with me always. We got Bubba with Bubba Outdoors. What's and up, we... y'all? Yep. And then we got our good friend Timmy is always with us. Timmy from Tim Kidwell Outdoors. What's going That's... on, everybody? Timmy is sometimes with us. <laughs> Timmy, the outboard namesake. Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I just want to go ahead and I want to apologize to everyone. I uh, know we did not have a bait shop talk live uh, last month uh, due to pretty much all of us were gone. I was off doing military duties and it was kind of hard to get Wi-Fi in a tent out in the woods. Uh, Timmy was on a family vacation. He was out of town and, you know, family comes first before YouTube. And then or else y'all have just been left with having a conversation with Bubba. So I, I apologize for that. Not that would have been the best episode ever. We got the highest ratings. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having a conversation with Bubba. I do it every time I go fishing, and I think all everyone, I'm sure Bubba thanks you too for all the concerns of uh, when we went out to Robin and poor Bubba didn't even catch a fish, and he, I think he lost his chatterbait. Yeah, I, I slung a chatterbait off. Yes, thank you for the concern. I was just happy the boat worked. Uh, that was that was the the you know the the good the good, and that was it. And also, congratulations to Timmy for hitting uh, 500, 500 subscribers. Timmy, I know that was a goal you were trying to get for a long time, and I'm sure uh, the giveaway went well. Yes, it did, actually. I uh, actually just posted that video today. So it is closed. No more. But then keep subscribing, though. I mean, I, I, I don't stop that. That's fine. <laughs> Definitely right. Definitely right. The next goal is to hit that magical 1,000 mark. And uh, speaking of 1,000, I myself am over 2,000 now. I am at 2,123. So uh -huh. it's time for time for me to do a giveaway. And it's to uh, lure packs and, you know, fish grips and fish scales and stuff like I've done in the past. Since you guys are joining us live, you're going to be the first ones to know before I actually do the giveaway video. I'm going to be giving away a Vexen rod. Uh, I'm going to be getting a seven foot medium heavy casting rod from Vexen, and we're going to give that bad boy away. It's not going to be the strike back. It's going to be the you know, actual custom. Yeah, not not that one. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be the actual custom made Vexen rod. Wow. So, every time knows, uh, the, the story behind that is every time Joe says strike back, I go. <laughs> yeah, he makes the whip sound. Well, Which, wow. the strike back did good. They got that two pounder on the whopper plopper. First bass on the whopper plopper. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, get out of the house and go fishing. You could use that vexing to catch some more uh, top water redfish. What's up? Get out of the house, go fish. Hey, he's been killing it out there in Fort George Inlet, man. He got his PB uh, red and the PB trout top what? all the same day on top water. Well, all right. Yeah. I need to get out there, obviously. I need to figure out how to get my kayak out there. Yeah, the rest of us are fishing on the bottom with shrimp like it is. <laughs> so, how about we kick this thing off? Let's get going, and uh, we'll do it. We'll go with the fishing reports. Since we're talking about saltwater, uh, saltwater report for me, uh, very limited saltwater for me, other than I finally went out and did some surf fishing out at Nassau Sound. I've been watching everybody tearing the whiting up and hearing the reports have been good. So I went out for an afternoon trip and fished till dark. And I ended up getting two stingrays, a sail cat, a sea trout, and one small shark. And I had some other, you know, smaller bites. I'm sure those were probably the whiting, but they weren't big enough to eat my circle hook that I had on. And then uh, also, for a lot of you all know, snapper season opened up. We'll touch on that more here later. Uh, my dad went out. They were about 14 miles. He was able to get out while I was at work, and he wasn't on the wreck probably five minutes in there. He had you know, the size snapper that they wanted and took home. So they're definitely out there thick. Everybody's killing them right now. And if you didn't get a chance to make it this weekend, don't fret. Uh, they'll be open next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, of course, I'll have military duty, so I will not be able to get out there 
and do any of that. So sadly, I'll be stuck doing inshore. But I have a tournament coming up anyway, so that's what I'll be getting on. Uh, larger bodies of fresh water. With this hot water, the river has definitely slowed down for bass. If you're going to be fishing in the St. John's, definitely find either grass docks with a lot of shade, or if you got a good electronics, try to get out there and find their shell bars. Right now, they're anywhere from like six to eleven feet is where they're finding uh, the good shell bars. And usually, when you pull up on a shell bar in the St. John's, either the bass are on there or they're not. And you know, depending on the tide, where they're going to be positioned on it, or, or if they're going to be active and feeding on it. If there's no water moving, they're more likely not going to be feeding. Uh, my next tournament is out there on Kingsley Lake, Camp Landing, uh, where the three biggest bass caught this year have been on Camp Landing. They so far have gotten three 13 pounders out of that lake this year. Woo! Yeah. Wow. So nice. I'm really, I'm really hoping I can hook into one of those. But with Camp Landing or Kingsley Lake, if you ever get a chance to fish it, you're either going to catch a one pounder or a new PB. That's just, it's, it's weird. It's, I've never caught any twos, threes, or fours. They've always been either eight pluses or a one pounder. And yes, I did catch an eight plus, even though she jumped off, I did have her on there. Uh, so that's the next big lake. That's the big lake I've been focusing on. I'll be focusing on that till the end of the month when I fish my tournament. So you guys wish me luck in that. And then after that, it's back to Rodman. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you guys didn't see that too, uh, you know what Joe's talking about there with Robin, he did he did lose like a, I don't know, it's a it was five six plus. Yeah, I mean, I it jumped early, could have been a seven, and that's uh, you know, that's big for this time of year, especially uh, everything's um, hot and skinny right now. Uh, except for me, I'm just hot. <laughs> yeah, I mean the uh, the river river's definitely been tough bass fishing. Um, it's uh it seems real hit or miss uh if you catch a cold front rain cools it off a little bit it's not bad um but other than that man i went out today uh and it was 90 degree water temp at 10 o'clock whenever i got off the water uh it was about what you would expect from you know bluebird skies 90 degree water temp no wind no tide i caught a couple dinks mudfish or mouth that was it uh a couple weeks ago though went out there and tore it up um and uh, you know, went to the same spot that uh, me and Tim went to the last time that, that we had like a 20 pound bag between the two of us. Uh, saltwater inshore is is definitely good. I know Joe was talking about offshore a little bit. Uh, saltwater inshore, you can get a lot of slot reds now uh, up here. Uh, and I'm hearing, starting to hear reports of bull reds pushing in closer uh, offshore. So I would not be surprised if this next full moon here at the end of the month doesn't push some bigger reds in. Uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of good shrimp reports. You know, usually this time of year we start seeing shrimp and crazy numbers in the river. Haven't heard a whole lot of that yet. Um, you know, but trout bites good. Flounders. Uh, I've heard. I was talking to a guy that was gigging flounder, um, and he said it's you know it's good whenever it's not murky water because all the rain. Now that uh, I imagine now that the rain's dried up a little bit, it's probably back good again. Gigging flounder, uh, but flounder bites been pretty good too. Um, but you know, Clapboard Creek, I've been heard, I heard was going off uh, here recently. So I imagine like Sisters Creek and all that stuff, ICW is too. Yeah. Em, how about you? You got anything to report? Honestly, uh, with it being super hot, not really. I went out fishing a couple times this past week, haven't really caught much at all. Any uh, yesterday, I caught two little ones, so I'm not going to make a video out of that. Uh, I did, however, I added a video when I was fishing with my new Rapala Ripstop. And, uh, well, I actually missed eight fish that day. I counted. They were nice size. They had the bait in their mouth when I went to set the hook. They just opened their mouths, and you just see it just leaving their mouths. But what I, I'm i glad I went out there because I was in my kayak. I'm about nine feet deep, and the grass comes up to about four feet, and I can see it on my Garmin. And that rapple of ripstop goes down about four feet. So just above the grass and they just come up, eat it and actually end up with a decent sized fish. But other than that, pond fishing and kayak fishing, not so great right now. Well, appreciate the report. Yeah. They're, they're probably burying themselves deep in that grass. Once the sun gets up, okay. uh, guys, if you're, if you're not a subscriber for uh, 904 fishing, Alex's channel, he has been killing it out there in the surf. <laughs> And that's what get, prompted me to go out there. I haven't been surf fishing in years. And after watching his video, I'm like, man, the surf is on fire. 
So I had to get out there. So uh, Alex, tell the folks what you what what you got to report and what you've been doing. Yeah, um, I mean for freshwater, like like everyone's been saying, it's just hot. So I decided to go uh, shore fishing, and I've been going. Uh, typically, I go to Jack's Beach, um, just south of the pier, a little bit, and uh, just I try to get off the beaten path so I don't get in people's way, and they don't get in my way. And then uh, Mickler's Beach is another favorite spot of mine. But uh, I've been uh, just throwing out salted shrimp on um, little one on two odd hooks. I typically get whiting croaker spot i've gotten a ladyfish and a small stingray on that and then after i get that i uh, throw it on a shark rod i've gotten a couple pretty nice sized sharks um you know three and a half four and a half uh just shy of five so uh the surf fishing has been on fire if you guys want to get out there i would highly suggest it this time of year uh, nice now do you, are you looking for when you're going down the beach trying to find a spot are you looking for anything in particular or just where there's not that so many tourists out there um it just it depends on where I am and what the tide is. Um, I use tide for uh, tidesforfishing.com so I can check what uh, where the low tide and the high tide is uh, for the beaches because it tells you you know which beach is what tide. So that's super helpful and I use that all the time. But uh, it's definitely helpful knowing when the low tide is going to be. I typically like to fish uh, the high tide going into the low tide, which kind of sucks because you have to pick up and move your rods every so you know often. But um, I, I tried to look for sandbars and um, I tried to get on the edge of a sandbar because it's usually a pass of water you can see when the tide is going down, which is why I fish the outgoing tide. And you can uh, you fish right off the edge of that sandbar and you usually cast right out in between the two sandbars with your right rods and then your left rods. You just cast straight out, which is typically my shark rods. But uh, for bait fish, I try to cast in between the two sandbars further out into the ocean. And I typically find I, I have good luck with bait fish that time. Nice. And uh, if you guys haven't seen it recently, the, la the latest video that Alex put up, he called himself a nice uh, four foot, like eh, maybe a little over four foot black nose shark on a spinner yep. rod. And it, it was definitely, it sounded like he was at the gym, man. You oh, were huffing and puffing with him. It was, I, I haven't, I haven't caught a big shark like that in a long time because I, I haven't been doing shore fishing. This year has really been the year I've really gotten back into it. And, uh, yeah, I, I was a little worried that he might steal a lot of my line and he did, and he was not wanting to give it up, but we finally got him in and it was, uh, it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah. Uh, speaking of shark fishing rods, you definitely got to up your game there. <laughs> yeah. No kidding, man. We gotta, we gotta get this bad boy out. Yeah. Guys, this is my shark rig. I have, this is a, uh, Penn Senator nine all has 150 pound braid with a hundred pound shock mono. And then I have a broomstick pretty much of a rod and it's all roller guides. So we're definitely, I want to get this bent on about an eight foot bull shark. That is like the goal for the summer. Or so you me my seven, one medium heavy action rod with uh, <laughs> my school seven, three to one won't work. If you catch something on that, man, uh, FX rods needs to give you like a heck of a bonus and just like give you like 20 free rods. If you pull in an eight foot bull shark, with a medium heavy hey i mean that uh that that the black nose i caught which was 45 inches um i caught that on 20 pound line and uh nine foot surf rod and a uh 5 000 size reel so you don't need you know to, to catch sharks if you want big sharks yeah you definitely need you know those those nine knots but uh, if you want to just get out there oh yeah yeah i mean that i had uh and i never knew they were this big either i went to simpson's creek one time and I had some live mullet out hoping to catch a tarpon because tarpon come through there. Mm -hmm. And I had my bottom mullet go off and went screaming and then the line got cut. So I thought, uh, I thought it was a bluefish because I, I called a bluefish prior to that. And we all know how toothy bluefish are. And then while I was tying on a new hook, my uh, 4,000 series spinning rod went off and I went to tighten down the drag it was a five foot black tip. And how I know that is because he came out of the water twice corkscrewing in the air. And of course me. you don't have the camera on because you're sitting there tying on a fishing hook, thinking nothing's going like that. It's going to happen. And I had no idea sharks that big were in Simpsons Creek. So that's a little lesson of, uh, don't hang your feet off the kayak in salt water. No matter have, like, if you think you're safe or not. What's that, Timmy? Do they have like any like shark fishing tournaments? Like you can do that. Well, Black Tip H used to have the Black Tip Challenge, which was the whole East Coast from Florida, like from Fernandina Beach all the way down to like the Keys, and it was like big money. And they had different uh, categories, like of course biggest Black Tip, 
biggest shark caught on spinning tackle, biggest non-shark species, uh, most sharks, biggest shark. They had different categories, and you'd win like those pin uh, international and like, the big gold pins and things like I mean like thousands of dollars. It, it, it was really uh, serious, but I haven't heard anything more of it. And they used to go all up and down the coast and record it. If you go to YouTube and type in Black Tip Challenge. You'll see videos of it. It's only guys fishing from the beach, no boats. Wow. Uh, Robert Harris joined us. We got Robert Martin and Rusty's like, I'm late, but I'm here. We hey, we thank every single one of you joining us, even if you're late. We're just glad to have you join us tonight. Hope you guys are beating the heat and got yourself a nice cool beverage. Uh, Robert Harris is asking thoughts on flounder gigging. Bubba, you were just talking about that a minute ago. I uh, also got uh, some friends that have been going out flounder gigging. Uh, flounder gigging here in northeast florida we, we finally got a little slack in the rain but before that it, with it raining every day it was hard to find clear enough water to do any uh serious flounder gigging if you're looking for some spots to go uh a lot of the popular spots are fort george inlet at night because all the sandbars and you can go on either side of the inlet of the bridge i've had luck on both sides and also uh nassau sound if you park on the south end of the river of Nassau Sound where the boat ramp is, uh, you can go down underneath the bridge and you can walk that whole stretch all the way up uh, to where the point is. And that's where a lot of people flounder gig if you're on foot. Uh, if you're on a boat, you can go around the Danes Point Bridge. It's good. Back around Mill Cove. Uh, there's reports of people gigging flounder in there. Uh, Salt Pit Creek. Yes, that's where I'm talking about. Like the boat ramp where you go to Salt Pit Creek, you can... Uh, Go to the beach side of that. Like if you go uh, walk, like you're walking to the bridge to go fish on the bridge, you'll see a little footpath underneath the bridge where people walk down there to go either fish at the beach or go flounder gigging. There, uh, Robert. And uh, Robert's only got me lost my train of thought here. I was talking about different places to go. Oh, if you had a boat. Uh, pretty much if you can find clear water right now, uh, I don't know about gigging wise, but Halls Over Creek, they're actually catching them in kayaks pretty good right now from what I've been hearing. Uh, I used to talk about doing it on foot. I used to do it. Uh, if you guys remember where the old Alan McConney was, I used to do it on foot over there a lot. Alan McConney has Fort George Inlet. Yeah. But like that, that whole like bank side of it, I'd, oh, I'd okay. go in there and start walking down that, that bank side where the Alan McConney was over there at Fort George. And right, then especially at low tide, you can get back yep. in that Creek. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, if it's low enough too, you can get out to like the sandbars out there. Yeah. Get out of the house and go fishing. If you're, Fishing for snook up here in Jacksonville, and you catch one, take a whole lot of pictures, man, because uh, <laughs> it, it is rare up here because we're so far north and it gets so cold during the winter. It's rare to catch a snook up here, but uh, from what I'm seeing, they're not they're not catching them so much. All you know, in the cold, like right in the inlet areas, like closer to the ocean, they're catching them more inland, like back in the tidal creeks. It seems where they're they're getting more snook action at. You know, up until this past winter, you heard, you know, more and more, it seemed like every year, like it was getting more and more common. And then this past winter just knocked us back like 10 years on it. Right, right. Uh, let's see here. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Boat update. I know you guys know uh, you've been seeing I've been struggling with boat issues and mechanic problems. Uh, do yourself a favor. Please learn from my mistake. If you have outboard problems as beyond your scope of maintenance, don't go to the, uh, hey, I got a friend that fixes outboards. Please take your boat to the dealer the first time. I know you get sticker shocked when you hear how much it costs, but it's worth it in the long run. They got better warranties, and they usually stand behind their work better. That's what happened to me. Uh, my father recommended a guy who was a mobile mechanic. I had my uh, outboard blow up. He did a powerhead swap on it. Uh, long story short, he did a crappy job. I ended up having to pay double because it went out again. I had it this time. I took it to the actual Merck dealership. We got the boat back, and now she's running better than it ever has. I'm in the the break in process right now with it. So hopefully it'll be broken in time for my tournament, which uh, my next big tournament, like I was saying, was on Kingsley at the end of the month. Uh, it's going to be a nighttime tournament, and it's going to be 12 hours, so it's, it's almost like an endurance tournament. It's going to be going from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's a that's a long time. So uh, we're going to have a lot of people out there on that uh, out there at nighttime on that lake. 
So definitely make sure my lights are working too. And uh, how we do our nighttime tournaments, uh, we don't leave our bass in the live well and weigh in like we do normally when it's the cooler part of the seasons and we do a, a daytime tournament. There's a uh, ruler called a golden rule and it has all the inches. And the way it works is it says uh, 14 inches, then this bass weighs one pound, seven ounces, 15 inches. The bass weighs one pound, 10 ounces and so on. So what you do is, is you put the bass on the scale, find how big he is. All right. The bass is 18 inches, two pound, one ounce. Your partner looks at it and make sure you're not treating, uh, cheating. You ask them, for, you know, they say, do you agree with this? And they agree. And then you sign a little clipboard and write down how much weight of the fish that you have. And then they add it all up, and that's how they found out who the winner is for our nighttime tournaments, that we're not keeping bass in hot water in a little live well for 12 hours all night. So Yeah, that'd probably be a little bit much. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. I'm glad we're looking out for con conservation on that. And uh, last year they didn't do it, but this year we're doing it again. FWC is uh, going to be out there with our club, and they're having us do, help them with research. Uh, when we catch a large bass, eight pounds or bigger, they want us to get a DNA sample and put it in a little vial and give it to them. And they're tracking the DNA and the uh, growth of the bass in Kingsley to see what's making them grow so big, pretty much. Like seeing how they can take that and put it, put it to use in other lakes. And, you know, of course, see how old they are. I think if you can get a scale, that helps them out, too. That Because uh, you can track them kind of like a tree. You look at the scale and you'll see the growth rings in it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so uh, pretty neat stuff. Like, I, I didn't know a lot of this stuff until I, you know, reached out and joined a bass club and started fishing these tournaments. You learn a lot from these guys that's been doing it since, like, the 70s. Uh, the bass club I'm currently with, the St. John's Bass Anglers. If you ever heard of Peter Televeros, he's a uh, professional bass angler. He fished with the Bass Masters, and now he's with FLW. He started in that club. So, you know, it was, it was, gla it was grassroots back then, which it kind of is uh, if you start at college nowadays. That's kind of like the new way of getting into the Bass Masters. So are we going to see you on the FLW tour? Is that what you're saying? Uh, you might see me on the Costa Series when I'm retired. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I, uh, you know, I was watching the past three days of uh, the FLW uh, Forest Book Cup coverage and coming home after, you know, having such a rough day in bad weather and everything today to see those guys struggling just like me this time of year I mean, it makes you feel a little bit better. Uh, but talking about boat stuff, man, Joe's passed on his bad luck to me, dude. He's uh, been fighting his so long. Uh, luckily, now, knock on wood, you know, my motor is still still running fine, strong, no issues there. But I had a little trailer issue. One of the uh, runners on my trailer, the uh, bracket holding it up, rusted out, kicked it off at like a 45-degree angle. Um, you know, I got it fixed up the week after, and then the week after that, I noticed a couple inches of water in the bottom of my boat while I was out there trolling around and got to looking around, trying to figure out where it's coming from, popped a rivet uh, whenever that, uh, you know, that runner kicked off. And so that, uh, you know, fixed that up and then got it up underneath it to patch it up, you know, from both sides and found a few more loose rivets. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what what's going on here? I'm going to have to re rivet the whole bottom of the boat and drill them out and do it all. And, but got it all patched up and everything. But, you know, my, uh, my safety tip for the week for you guys, I always keep um, a little tube of JB Weld Marine on the boat. And that stuff is almost like a, like plumber's putty where it's like two part uh, putty that you can mix it together and it'll set in water and it'll, it'll set you know, almost immediately working time on it. it's like five, 10 minutes and then it takes a few hours to cure, but that'll uh, get you out of a pinch whenever you're got a couple inches of water in the bottom of the boat, like I did. So of course I came back and knocked that off and cleaned it all up and fixed it right later on. But that, that allowed me to keep fishing that day. Uh, so that's, that's probably not a bad idea to keep that on the boat. Would you? Yeah, definitely. It never hurts to have a backup, just like duct tape, or you can get you some Flex Seal. That'll work. Yeah, get some Flex uh, Seal. Tyler Bean was commenting. Uh, I guess he knows I got a Mercury. You can definitely tell who watches my videos. He said, "Buy a Yamaha, uh, Tyler. I've been down the Yamaha road, and I had a way worse experience with a Yamaha." I'll so, tell you what. Now talk about Yamahas and dealers. Okay, I bought a Yamaha. Whenever I bought it, it had twelve hours on it. Uh, by two hundred hours, I had to have uh, both carburetors, you know, rebuilt and cleaned and everything. Uh, well, it was actually before two hundred hours. I think it was like a hundred and thirty. Uh, but both my carburetors were gummed up from the, you know, the automatic oil injection on them. Uh, just completely 
just funky, funky. I mean, and that was running the boat every three days at the time. I had a, a job, luckily, where I worked about six hours a day, four, four days a week. So I'd run the boat all the time. I, and, I think when it comes to outboards, it's kind of like uh, – it's kind of like saying, what's your favorite Ford, Chevy, or Dodge? I mean, everybody has their own brand they stick behind. So yeah. you're, you're, you're never going to be right, no matter what brand you say. I and so. uh, Slim One Done, he joined in with us. I th hey, thanks for coming in there, Slim. He was saying, uh, snook aren't rare. Catch them in the ditch all the time. He said, Matanzas Inlet's also good for snook. Uh, Matanzas Inlet is a bit of a drive for me. If I'm driving that far, it's because I'm fishing a tournament, usually. And he <laughs> said, uh, and he's saying Red Bay Marine. He recommends them. He says they're really good. I ended up taking uh, my boat because up here where I live, I went to Chelsea Marine over there, Uli slash Fernandina area, and they did a really great job. Their mechanic there really knows what he's, what he's doing for sure. Way better than the uh, first one I had. All right. Uh, Timmy's back from having difficult internet difficulties. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it was question. probably a stupid storm messing with my internet. I don't know if you guys got hit by it or not, but we got hit hard. And turn off the electric and everything else. So I don't see it out here yet. But question for the audience, question for everyone watching, and of course, question for you guys that are here with me today. Uh, is it good to stick to one type of fishing, or should you know for your YouTube channel, you know, stick with what you're what you're good at, kind of deal, or is it better to break it up and kind of go every direction, like do a little bit of this, a little bit of that? It depends what you have time for. <laughs> well, Alex, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, my thoughts on that is like, uh, take this year, for example, it's a perfect example, uh, with the cold snap that we had, uh, at the beginning of the year. And then it got a little warm in February, you know, we got up into the eighties and then it went right back down to the thirties and forties. Um, that really threw off the bass because that month of warmth that we had, I uh, really threw off their spawning period. So I knew because of that, that, uh, the bass fishing was going to be a little wonky this year. Um, so despite the fact that I have been adamantly bass fishing, you know, almost, exclusively for the past five years um, i decided to bust out all my saltwater stuff and uh, get more saltwater stuff now and um i uh you know you just kind of got to roll with the flow of what's happening in nature and what's uh what what's what's working basically yeah def definitely uh I i'm like that too i'm kind of seasonal what got me started on youtube though is i had that pescador 120 and that was 2016 after I just got back from a deployment and I was hitting the salt water hard, man. Like all 2016, that's pretty much all I was doing. And I was killing it. I was, I had, my freezer was so full of sea trout and redfish. Um, I mean, I was just putting fish back. I was pretty much just going out for the fun of it and trying to do new things. And then the past couple of years, man, salt water is just, it has died off for me. I don't know what is going on. I am cursed. I haven't caught a slot red all year. Uh, barely got some sea trout, and I've lost some really nice flounder. You know, probably in around the 19 to 20 inch range flounder. And there's just they come up enough where you can see them at the boat, and by the time you grab the net, they shake off. That's that's where I'm at on saltwater. Meanwhile, freshwater fishing, I've been killing it. Uh, I've been getting pretty good bags and tournaments. Uh, good footage. Got my PB back in December on a jig, no less. I was throwing a bait I was trying to get confidence in, and what, what better way to get confidence in it than catching your PB on it. <laughs> um, but saltwater, like I said, for those guys that keep seeing it, I've I seen all the saltwater stuff coming up. Yeah, sheeps is coming up. Slim, me and Timmy tried to go out and catch sheeps. I hooked one big sheep head, and, of course, he pulled off. That was the only bite I had. But we did get Timmy on some – saved our butts that day. Right, but we did get Timmy on some sea trout and some uh, – and at Jack and some other stuff, but definitely we'll get, we'll, we'll get back into the salt. I do. Yeah, for they, those I are, saw you, Alex, I think. What's that? Oh yeah. We did see you that day, Alex. Cause you're like, Hey, I knew I saw some people fishing yep, kayak yep, the bridge yep. out at uh, Fort George Inlet. Yeah. yeah I was that, looking over and I'm like, man, you know, he looks, I, I feel like I've seen that kayak. That looks really familiar. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, but yeah, for those who are craving some saltwater videos any day now, I got it pulled up. I'm just in the editing right now. That surf fishing trip I took, that's going to be coming up next. So you'll bet you'll be seeing that. And then definitely going to get the kayak back in. I'm going to try to do some flounder fishing. I don't know why, but flounder fishing always seems to be a real popular video. So be looking for the flounder fishing video coming up. Uh, they probably taste next so good. So. They are. They're delicious. 
Uh, thing about flounder is the Florida limit for flounder is 12 inches. To me, a 12 inch flounder is, is like when you, by the time you get the meat off of it, it's like a newspaper. You can see right through it. So I have my own size limit that like my personal size limit will flounder in Florida. For me, they got to be 15 inches or bigger for me to get them. Yeah, Slim. That's where I'm probably going to be going. This uh, hauls over. I heard been doing good over there. But definitely, I like to keep about a 15 inch or bigger flounder because there's a lot more meat, and you know, it's, it's worth the trouble of cleaning them at that point. You know, so throw the little 12 inch ones back, let them grow up a couple more inches. It, they'll be freaking grown four inches within one year. But uh, I I definitely like variety. Uh, someone a long time ago told me like, don't do YouTube to satisfy the masses. Just do what you love to do and just bring everyone along with you. Yep. That's the way I try to look at it. I, I mean, do, uh, YouTube, yeah. I wouldn't have met you guys. So, I mean, it definitely builds relationships, builds friendships, and get you out in the water, you know? Get you out of the house. Get you out of the house and go fishing, would you say? <laughs> there's, your, there's your shout out, man. There's your plug. <laughs> there's your plug. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've always uh, had that, you know, same similar mindset of trying to uh, not not just do what everybody else is doing. Um, you know, I take some inspiration from it, but I try to put my own personal twist on it. Yeah, it's yeah. You, you, you're you like, uh, Alex, when I watch you, I feel like I'm going to school because you're kind of like the professor when you talk. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of people ask me a lot of questions and I get a lot of messages on my 904 Fishing uh, Facebook page about what I'm doing, what gear I'm using, the size hooks I'm doing, what rod am I using, what reel am I using, you know, what's my drag set, what's my bait. I, I get all kinds of questions, so I try to just include that uh, in, in the actual video. And I feel like a lot of people watch me because of that. So I, it's, I don't know. I try to include that. Yeah, so we have a bait shop talk so people can come over here in the chat and they can ask us any kind of questions about any of our videos that they want and we can answer it to them live right here as they come up and i'm sure the number one question you get alex is where's the hidden lake oh yeah oh every i get at least an email probably a week about where the hidden lake is and um yeah that's it's called the hidden lake for a reason right <laughs> right right i mean it's called google people i'm sure you can find it Oh, people have. I, I know I've met subscribers out there. They're like, hey, wait, you know, I know you. But uh, if you if you really want to put in the effort, you'll find it. And that's that's, you know, why I try not to tell people is if, if they put in the effort and they find it, then, you know, they deserve to fish. There. That's how I view it. <laughs> ah, Slim just now recognized you. He said, oh, that's the 904 fishing <laughs> dude. I got mad at the kingfish trip. He, I did not do a kingfish trip. Question mark. <laughs> you put one up you didn't know it i was about to say i don't know i, I went out on a boat but uh i didn't catch any kingfish did you label it did you title it kingfish did you put a little clickbait out there alex no i my uh my older brother keeps me in check with that he's like you know if i ever see you putting up a video because he's the one that got me into fishing he said if i ever see you clickbaiting i'm gonna shut you down hard and i was like all right fair enough fair, <laughs> fair enough he's like oh maybe someone else <laughs> Yeah, yeah, somebody else likes to clickbait every once in a while. Hey, thanks for the sub weekend. Yeah, let's 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 everybody show Bubba some love. Cuz like we just got done uh talking about Tim hit 500 subscribers and I hit 2000 and Bubba's rocking a a cool 63. Oh, I'm like 70 something now, man. Look out. Uh, now, you know, talking about like videos and stuff and and kind of it's I I'm on the, you know, uh, everybody knows me like I'm I'm on the preference of I just go fish and uh just happen to have a camera with me. Like I don't I definitely don't fish in order to YouTube. Like I'll upload if I get something worth uploading, but it's never my like I go fishing probably five times, six times for every video that I upload. Yeah. Uh Poor old, poor old Bubba. I think he got a lot of sympathy subscribe subscriptions when he didn't catch anything at Rodman. He is not going to let this go, and now I'm not going to let him. <laughs> I'm not going to let him get away with with doing all this because every other time that we go fishing together, I put it on him on the back of his own boat. Yeah, when you catch an 11 pounder in my boat out of the back during the cold front, yeah, I got to have something to hang on to. Didn't he catch a fish like on accident trolling in the back of your boat too? Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, that was the second time Timmy blew up and said, uh, I, I, "I'm done." 
Yep. So that's uh, Joe was due due for one on me there. He yeah. uh, he's gonna run it until the next time we go fishing though. Yeah, you also jinxed me that day. You're like, I mean, I don't mean to say anything, but this is the best this outboard's ever ran. And about two minutes later, girl just died in the middle of the St. John's River. Yep. Hey, they're flooding in now. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the subs. <laughs> <laughs> I if you, uh, if you ever seen a man being, a, if you ever want to see a man get assaulted by a manatee, uh, publish your channel. And every time we go somewhere as a group or just the two of us, and we take the kayaks out, even though me and Tim got the brand new fancy kayaks with all the fish finders and attachments, <laughs> the first kayak everybody compliments on is Bubba with the horns out yep. there on the front looking like boss hog of the kayak world. Got to make it your own, man. Got to make it your own. My favorite comment that we got there was, are you guys going to go fishing? Like, <laughs> you nah. have four fishing rods sticking out, fish finders, and tackle boxes. Nah, we're just going to go tubing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. It's, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, on that, you know, same kind of thing with the kayak. It's, well, uh, you know, when, when you've been smoking pot since 2 a.m. in the morning, you know, people are going to ask some weird questions. Well, There's a lot there. of that out there. You got a lot so of that mad. You were so mad that trip because everybody was acting a fool. Yeah, man. I'm a grouchy old man. I'm freaking military, dude. I hate hippies. <laughs> you call them hippies. They're just college kids out on spring break. If you had, look, in 2018, if you have a man bun, mm -hmm. you wear sandals, you smoke pot, and you got a beard, but that's only because you don't know how to shave, you are a 2018 hippie. I got news for you. Timmy, when you get to be our age, <laughs> you get to call college kids hippies. That's right. That's All right. right. So what age is it to where you start going like, you know what? I just don't want to do anything anymore. I don't, I don't know. It's such a thing. Yeah, I haven't got there yet. I mean, yeah, I mean, say, I, I even my dad's seventy-two years old, and he's you can't slow him down. He's either doing a project like you know, uh, working on generators, or he's out fishing even without me yeah i think it's uh that's a person to person thing i don't i don't think i'll ever get there either yeah so timmy you you about i think you're the only one really that's kind of stuck to your guns on your youtube video you're pretty much uh small waters and taking trips but they're all except for maybe about a handful all bass fishing yeah unfortunately um like we actually just got done moving and starting here really soon. I, I really would like to do a lot more saltwater fishing. I want to do a red fish trip. I want to do a, another sea trout trip and then something else going down the pipes, maybe a shark fishing trip. Who knows? Yeah, we're definitely going to do the uh, shark fishing expedition. I want to do that so bad, especially before you have to leave us, you know, that way you get to experience it. I would love to see Timmy okay. get drugged down the beach by a 10 foot hammerhead. Hey, that way I don't have to be like, hey, guys, can you wait for me? I got the shark pulling me. Right. Going on the Florida sleigh ride. Uh, so, why don't you show everybody what you got in your little mystery tackle box that you're so proud of, Bubba? Oh, man, we do it every every bait shop. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll save the best for last. I'm sure you probably are going to see these things all over uh, YouTube that month. So we'll, we'll Every 9- and 10-year-old you know. who gets the mystery tackle box has already posted this. Okay. Yep, so we'll save that for last. Um, you know, one thing that I kind of want to use is pretty cool, a uh, little swing head jig. Um, they got a 3-8 ounce swing head jig. I thought that was cool. Some trailers for it, uh, little paddle tails on it. Looks like something nosing down bait fish. And then, Joe, you'll like these trailers for it. Oh, oh, can I have those? No. <laughs> uh, those are pretty cool. A little Fire Tiger Crank square bill. That's nice. nice. And then, you know, the one that you're going to see flooding YouTube this month, which is, uh, it's cool. I'm going to I'm gonna try it whenever I get on a topwater bite. Uh, what do they call him? Danny the Duck or something like that. It's a hollow body duck. It's pretty cool. It's got some stupid little legs on it that aren't going to do much. Uh but it's, I guess you could walk it. That's about yeah, the only thing I can think of. It's pretty much, yeah, you can walk it. It's uh, And, you know, from the underside, I'm not sure how much, you know, different it's going to be than anything else walking from the underside. It's cool. You know, it's one of those things that they sell for the fishermen more than the fish, I think. Uh, to them, it's going to be a walking bait. But, you know, it's uh, it's worth the money. You know, it's, that's, that's about the price of the mystery tackle box in itself right there. 
Yeah, well, I know it's a freshwater box, but as Tyler pointed out, the swing head jigs, they're really good for flounder, and also they're really good for uh, sheep's head. A lot yep. of people use those for sheep's head. Uh, they'll just take those, drop them right by the piling, but since they're loose, that you know fiddler crap can kind of swing down there in the current and versus yep. you know being locked on it looks a little bit more natural yeah i mean there's a lot of crossover in that too uh saltwater freshwater stuff that i don't think it's used a whole lot that uh that works really well that you know i accidentally luck into it a lot of time catching reds and trout on a lot of bass baits because i'll fish a lot of brackish water and um, i've found that jigs and texas rig crawls you know they get smoked by reds all the time uh you know because it's uh what's a crawfish looks like a, a fiddler crab you know if you're running that kind of imitation in the same kind of water uh and i did always want to find out you know throwing a chatterbait for reds while well, i saw some reds busting bait and i was throwing a chatterbait for bass in brackish water and uh lost a couple chatterbaits <laughs> on some uh some 12 pound liter getting smoked by reds on that so yeah reds will uh destroy a chatterbait I want to yeah. get like a like a gold bladed one for, you know, just four reds. That'd be cool. Put just put like a uh, like a white paddle tail on the back yeah. of it. That'd probably work great. Uh, Tyler said hollow body frog for reds. I can see man. That. I've caught them on that. I've caught them on uh, weightless lizards fishing uh, top water for bass on a weightless lizard on a spinning rod. I'll do that a lot. Um, and I've caught them on that. I've caught them on sinkos. Uh, you know, I've, I've caught them on all kinds of crap. Uh, hollow body frogs for, I've been smoked by trout on them a lot too. Yeah. I know they got a hollow body, uh, mullet, which is essentially the same thing that live target makes. I, I was looking at that the other day. I think that'd be a pretty cool idea. And, uh, they were talking about hollow body frogs. I got me a new little lure in. It didn't come in a mystery tackle box cause, uh, I don't have that anymore. I just go out and buy whatever I'm like. And I got a, a fire tiger live target, uh, hollow body frog. And if, Anybody goes on Tackle Warehouse, for some reason, they have live target hollow body frogs on clearance. So if you want to save some money and get yourself some hollow body frogs, check out Tackle Warehouse. And by the way, no, I am not sponsored by Tackle Warehouse. But if Tackle Warehouse comes across this video, you know, give me a, give me a call. I'm, I'm willing to listen. I'd, uh, I'd like to jump in on that, too. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Dibs. <laughs> hey, if anybody wants to send me anything for free, y'all go right ahead. Yeah, I guarantee you it will not be uh what's what's that rod that you done broke twice? Yeah, if you want to send me anything but an enigma uh <laughs> phenom or whichever one that is, yeah, don't send me one of those. Oh, uh, speaking of rod break, I don't know if you guys saw it before I had to take it off. Uh I posted a video and I broke my rod setting the hook and uh I got a call from FX and they're like, Hey, we're gonna need you to take that down. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you took it down, but I know what video you're talking about. You know what video I'm talking about? Yeah. So uh, what actually happened was I have two of those rods. The first one was that situation, but I put the reel on the wrong rod. And uh, when I went to set the hook, snap, and they just weren't happy about it. So sorry about that, FX. What's yeah. up, Big O? What's up, Big man? O, we're hey. definitely happy to have you here. Big O is, is, is a frequent subscriber. He's a longtime uh, subscriber of mine. I, he always comments in every video. He's nope. so supportive, I man. Big O's also has some uh, sweet videos. He's down there catching peacock bass in Miami and fishing, hitting the mangroves up. God, I wish we had mangroves here. That'd be so sweet. But he's, you know, he's a family man going to air shows. Big O, you know, definitely a big shout out for you, man. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. And I hope, I hope you, I know you just showed up. Uh, for everyone that's just now showing up, I had 2,000 s subscribers. And since y'all going to get like a little sneak peek, you're watching it live for the 2000 subscriber giveaway, instead of tackle or things like that, I'm going to be giving away a uh, seven foot medium, heavy Vexen casting rod. So that look for that video. It's going to be the same thing, you know, comment and like, and share and everything to win. And I can't wait to see who's going to win that Vexen rod. Cause that's going to be sweet. And trust me, you're going to love it. Talking about a uh, negative on videos though, Tim, I did a, uh, you know, a trapper tackle, got a trial of those from something like a free trial, like four hooks and a couple of them were defective. And they sent me like $75 worth of freaking hooks after that. They, they saw that. Yeah. They, they saw that. And, uh, 
I had like the eye snap off on them and, uh, you know, had that video. I was like, oh, I like the concept, but I uh, need to work on the quality a little bit. And one of them sent me a message like, hey, you want to be in our pro staff? I was like, uh, not really anybody's pro staff. but <laughs> He's just yeah. cover. Yeah, but he uh, they they sent me like seventy five dollars worth of hooks, man. It took me oh, wow. like eight months to to use all of them, and I'm still got a couple of them hanging around. But those things now, those things are awesome for skipping Senkos. But uh, you know, I just thought that was really cool with their company that they were like, hey, yeah, we had a problem, we fixed it. Here, check this out. Yeah, I I, I think me and Tim have this conversation about how I feel about you know pro staff nowadays. I don't call myself pro staff. I call myself field staff because they give me uh, equipment and stuff to try out in the field. I don't swell my head up about it, but I don't use equipment unless, you know, I believe in it myself. You know, mm -hmm. I don't just, if someone like anybody could come up to me like, Hey, you want to, you want to pitch our stuff on your, on your channel? I, uh, let me use it first and see how I feel about it before I'm going to tell other people that, Hey, this is a good, good equipment or not. And I also like companies that listen. You know, if there's a problem or a way you think you can improve on a product, I like companies that are like, oh, yeah, thanks for telling us, man, that we'll take that on board. And sometimes you actually see those changes. And that's to me, that's what being field staff is about. You're the ears, you know, of the company, you know, pretty much like you go back and tell them, hey, this is working or this isn't working. But yeah. I don't consider myself pro staff. I'm not an elite series member. I'm not FLW. I don't have my own fishing show on outdoor channel. You You're know, not a pro I, fisherman. Right. I don't I do not do this for a living. There we go. That's the best way to define it. Therefore, I define myself as field staff. But there's some people that take it and like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pro staff. Me and me and Scott Martin are freaking tight. Like, no, I, I don't I don't I don't loop myself in that in that category. Yeah. Well, like like the pro though, it's not professional, it's promotional staff. Well, when you hear pro, what's the first thing you think of? Well, people say, of course, professional. But it does stand for, and I completely understand what you're saying, too. You and I had this conversation when we were over at Mulligan's. But, uh, like, being on a promotional staff, I mean, it is it's it it is really considered a field staff. You're, you're testing the baits and giving them feedback. And like you said, you need to get with companies that will actually take that feedback and run with it. Like Bucktail Johnny's, when they came out with the Whiplash, uh, I've had some issues with it. I have some issues with a lot of their stuff, but they listen and they change it. You know what I mean? So if you, if people that are watching this video and if you guys are thinking about joining promotional staff just to get a good deal or whatever, just <laughs> think about the product and are you really going to use it? And if so, what can you do to make it better? Yeah. I'm, I'm digging the comments over here in the side. And uh, Tyler said, yeah, until Coast uh, FLW. I'm like, yeah, you got a good point there. I hope I got, you know, more people looking at me if I'm starting to fish the FLW. <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, how come you don't go Bassmasters? Like, because to fish the Bassmaster Open is stupid expensive. It's like, and then you're going against, like, Bobby Lane and the actual pros, and you're going to go fish on, like, Lake Sinclair and stuff. Yeah. Bro, I've never fished north of the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, so through all of a sudden like, oh yeah, by the way, next tournament, you're, we need to drop down a couple thousand and, uh, we're going to go fish for smallmouth on Lake St. Clair. Oh boy. I hope Timmy makes it. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually watching Hunter Shryrock and now he came up through it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that series he posted on YouTube, the, uh, the 27 opportunities. That's pretty cool how he's doing it. Yeah. A lot of guys nowadays that they, they're coming up through college and high school fishing and, you're going, you're going to think I'm crazy and you're thinking I'm going to make this stuff up. But when I was in high school, I had that idea. Like, how come we don't have high schools fish against each other and we got golf? You know, I mean, and you got band championships. Why the, why couldn't we have different high schools fish against each other? And man, I like, I said, I was a little dork. I was like a fishing geek. I'm like, I wrote all this down. Like, oh, First Coast home waters could be, you know, uh, Bethesda Lake and, you know, West Nassau could be the St. Mary's River. And, I, you know, I had all this stuff written down. And, like, I, I even gave it to the principal. And they're like, yeah, it's just not in the budget. And this is something nobody would want to do. Little did he know that it would turn into what it has today. And you got, like, 400 boats fishing, you know, high school tournaments. And then college. Now you can get sign-on scholarships to go fish for, you know, Auburn or Texas A&M. Like, where was this when I was growing up? Oh, I'd have been over that in a minute. I would have had, like, the 
greatest GPA you've ever seen if I knew I could go fish in college professionally? Yeah, like even University of Florida, you know, has a bass fishing team right now. Like, oh, man, I can be a gator? Oh, that'd be freaking awesome. No, uh, I said I followed in the family footsteps and I joined the military, which, you know, I did not regret that at one bit, but maybe the Navy needs to get on board and get a, uh, a bass fishing team. We can fish against Army or something. That'd be, that'd be pretty kick-ass. <laughs> I want to let you guys know um, it is official. I'm actually going to do the, uh, the FLWBFLs starting next year. Tell me that. Oh, oh, who are you going to fish with? So uh, there's actually my buddy. Uh, his name's Tallahassee. Uh, that's his name on Instagram, Tallahassee Fishing or something like that. Uh, his real name's Frank, and uh, so he's actually going to join as a boater, and I'm going to join as a non-boater. And uh, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to go back and forth between Okeechobee and whatever is the closest around here in Georgia, but uh, uh, be Palaka. Saint, you better start knowing the St. John's real good, my friend. Oh yeah. Uh, we're if uh we're affiliated with the BFLs. We're affiliated with FLW. Mm. So if you're looking to get a club and know about the federation and everything you can we're more welcome i'll i'll bring you on you can come on with the uh st john's bass anglers okay so like i said that's that's the tournament trail i've been going through is the one peter t came up through and you know you're more welcome to do that i got we got all these saltwater guys over here and i'm sure we're just ticking them off right now with all this bass talk i love it so uh all right, all right. Speak, but speaking of bass and speaking yeah. of summer and hot how many guys, and you were talking about Instagram, right? Yeah. How many guys on Instagram do you see this time of year? You know, they're holding up like five bass in their hands like that, you know, and like getting that uh, cool guy shot with look guys. I got a, I got a kick-ass limit, you know, today. How many guys do you see like that on Instagram this year or on Facebook right now? I haven't seen a lot of them do that, but I have seen a few of them in the past year or so. Uh, they have this thing called like a T-52 thing or whatever you can saw into your freaking live well and they say that it allows cold air to get into your live well and flush out all the ammonias and all that kind of stuff i don't know if it works or not but yeah but what's the reality is having someone do that like to me in the summertime if you're going to take pictures of bass when you pull them out take them as you catch them don't don't leave them in a hot live well for you know six hours when it's 96 degrees outside and even if you got the recirculator on, the surface temp of the water, what'd you say, Bubba, is like 91 degrees, 92 yeah. right now? Yeah, by the time I got off today, it was uh, it was over 90. Right, so you got like five bass crammed in a live well with, you know, 90, probably 96 degree water because, you know, it's hot in there. You're not going to get in there as fast just so you can take a picture, you know. Uh, I, to me, it's just. Yep, CPR, catch, photo, release. That's, that's what you need to do during the summertime. Now, yep. if it was winter... And the water temperatures, like in the 60s, is going to hold more oxygen. The bass are not going to be stressed out as much. You know, you can, you know, just take, you can, you can probably do something like that. But for me, when it's like in the 90s during the summertime, I'm, I really keep them alive. That's why, like I said, this tournament we're fishing, you're going to put them on a the board, get the measurement and the weight, and then turn them right back loose, kind of like uh, major league fishing. That's why during the middle of the summer, we, we don't have uh, live well tournaments or actually weigh in tournaments. Yeah, I mean, the only uh, bass that ever see my live well are, uh, you know, ones that I'm going to get a weight on if I got to dig out a scale or something like that, chunk them in there for a minute. But, yeah, I'm definitely not, you know, stuffing them in there all day or even – I'm not, you know, putting any in there for anything other than that. If I got to go dig out a scale or something like that, to take a picture and get a weight, and that's it. Other than that, right. Right like we put your 11-pounder in the live well, but that was like February, and it was just like what you said. We went to go get scales and the camera and like – because that was like a freaking fish of a lifetime. So, you know, what the heck? Rattlesnake Island is good for – you talking about mangrove snapper there, Alex? Yeah, mangrove snappers. Uh, that, that's – that's red bass is slang for mangroves, right? No, red no, bass red, is slang red for redfish, red drum. Red drum, yeah. Oh, my bad. I always heard that was good for mangroves. My bad. <laughs> where, where, where are you from? Georgia, Kingsland, just over the border. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Dang, I don't know. know. Uh, you guys want a local mangrove spot, that little uh, – I want about. one. <laughs> oh well, I could put you on a couple, but I'll give you the public one. Uh, is uh, you know the island that runs under the Dames Point, the little channel that cuts through there to Mill Cove. The rocks on that's pretty good for mangroves. Goat Island? No, nah, the farther east than that, the one that runs under the Dames Point. Uh, Fishing Flunky said, "Are you still rocking the Sea Ghost?" I'm torn 
on what you had to get. Yes, fishing fun flunky, I am still rocking the Sea Ghost, and I will because any other kayak above that is way out of my price range. I like to save money, and you know, by spending like three thousand dollars for a kayak, to me, you might as well just go ahead and get yourself a skiff for that kind of money, so especially because it's going to be so heavy, you're going to have to put it on a trailer anyway. It's going to be hard to uh, manhandle that yourself. Yeah, uh, Goat Island, I have caught some bull reds out of there. Just put a big whole mullet down there on the bottom by the rocks where the when the uh, tide's coming in seems to be the best for me. And you can get some real good bull reds over there by Goat Island. The but, uh, yeah. sandbar side of it's got a ton of crabs that run around it too. So if you're fishing it, uh, you know, with fishing for them with, with crabs, uh, you know, quarter crab or whatever, that old sandbar edge of it is real good too. Right. Fish, fish and flunky, I would say it really depends on – what kind of body of water you're going to be fishing in and also your body size, uh, not knocking Tim in any kind of way, but Tim is like on the shorter, the smaller size. So the 10 footer works perfect for him. He can, that vibe yellowtail he's got, he yep. can stand up and like pretty much do calisthenics and yoga and that thing. I actually, but, have, yeah. Yeah. But see me being like six foot and over 200 pounds, the 13 uh, foot sea ghost works better for me, even though I look like a camo battleship coming through the water. <laughs> and that sucker is about as heavy as a battleship, too. I will tell you that. Right. I'd hate to see if what a Hobie would be like. And uh, Bubba is the only one out of us that has a sit inside, but he has his own flair in there and he has his own reasons. His, I think, uh, at least his feet don't get burnt. That's right. And I don't get burnt feet. And yeah, I mean, we've talked about this on here before. I bought mine with the whole idea of camping and fishing out of it. Uh, so I like the extra storage of the sit inside in there. Right. And as Big O pointed out, uh, the old Pescador, uh, that's what I started out. That's what Big O is still rocking. I believe Big O was the one that uh, he's, that's when he first joined me. It was my very first videos. I did a review on my Pescador. And Big O got a Pescador, too. I, I don't know if it was because of that video or he got it prior and he was just checking out some other ones. But that was my starter. I sold that to a friend of mine at work. It's still out there. It's still fishing. It's still getting salty and wet. There's still fish slime in it. I just wanted something that was uh, wide enough where I could stand up in it and had more storage. So that's why I upgraded to the Seagoes. So the reason I got the Seagoes was I got a lot for the money that I was spending on it. And he said the 130 is about as big as I can put on my Suburban. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't go no bigger than that. Like I said, anymore, you're going to need a trailer. And then, uh, Alex, uh, you got a Pelican or what, what you rocking, Alex? Yeah, uh, I've got a Pelican Angler uh, that I actually got on a ridiculously good deal from um, a sporting goods store. And uh, it, was, it was just on clearance, and I happened to cross it. And I got it at like... Uh, 20% of the uh, normal price. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm buying it. And uh, I have no way of transporting it right now. So I, I have to figure that out. But um, I'm, I, the kayak that I actually want is the Field and Stream Shadowcaster. Uh, it's a 12 foot kayak. It's got a seat that kind of raises up. And um, I, uh, when I used to sell kayaks, I uh, decided that that's kind of the one I was I was leaning towards just because of all of the accessories it has, all of the things it can do. Um, the seat is really important for me because, um, I, I mean, I'm 6'3", 200 pounds, so I need kind of a bigger boat. The one I have now is only 11 foot, and uh, I mean, it's it's sturdy, but I've got to be careful in the water. So I'm hoping for something with a better seat for, uh, you know, that back support is super important when you're kayaking and uh, hoping to, uh, you know, get get a little more stability when I'm out there. Right. Uh, Slim saying he has two boats. He's got a bay boat and a creek boat. Uh, I got the kayak and a boat and a half. By what I mean by the half is I got the kayak, I got the uh, Skeeter bass boat, and then me and my dad went half and half on a 24, uh, 26 foot dusky center console with twin twin Timmies on the back of it. By twin Timmies, I mean uh, 200 horsepower Mercury's. And that's what dad took out to get the snapper and left me at work, sadly. People are probably confused on what you mean by Timmy. Go ahead and just, you know, let them know what that means. All right. Backstory on Timmy. Uh, we call the outboard on my bass boat Timmy <laughs> because when we took a trip to the Santa Fe River, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we took the kayaks to Jenny Springs, and we went Swanee bass fishing in the Santa Fe River. And every time we went out, Timmy would start getting a little tired, and he'd be like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to fish. 
or he would ask if we were there yet and asking how much further. Well, due to my mercury always having problems, uh, like either stalling out or breaking, we named it Timmy because he would be like, uh, I don't want to go no further. I'm ready to fish now. And the mercury would stop. But that's no longer an issue. Thank God. I got that fixed. Yeah, and, and Timmy will keep up now. <laughs> Oh, Slim said he doesn't have two boats. He says uh, those are the. Uh, he's saying that's the best way to go. Those are the best two to get. Yeah, especially for coastal Florida. Uh, that definitely a bay boat and a creek boat would be the way to go. Uh, creek boat, where you got that covered? Bubba's got us covered with a creek boat. Yep, we got the old ass tracker. Yeah, with a push pole. That's right. Hey, I upgraded my push pole thanks to Big O. Big O had uh, his video on. He called a, a push pole at ollie's uh which is like a you know kind of like a big lot type store like an overstock type store and uh he went and got a uh like a dip net pole for a pool and i was like dang that's a good idea so i went and snagged one on amazon because i went to ollie's and they didn't have any so i snagged one off of amazon so thanks big o that was a good idea dude that thing is awesome it's that's light it. it's sturdy uh you know it's that thing works so what's this about uh, St. John's I'm County? Sorry, not Big o. I said Big O. That's get out of the house, go fish. My uh, bad. <laughs> sorry, Big O. We try to give you some credit and get yep. out of the house. I was about to be like, what, what, yeah, man? What that was yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's this about a, a boat tax and St. John's County boat ramps? Oh, man, they are. So St. John's County, they ha, it's not in yet, but they have proposed um, like a, 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 it's basically a tax, but it's uh, like a ramp fee, uh, like a daily ramp fee for you know all 12 boat ramps in st john's county uh but the one they propose is like five bucks uh, uh you know like a daily ramp usage which is ridiculous it's it's that's why i call it a tax because that's really all it is it's ridiculous because that's what all of our boat registration fee goes for is all and that kind of maintenance license. yes and your fishing license that goes to all that kind of maintenance and stuff uh, but you know the worry with that is you know you've already got poorly maintained ramps uh anyway i mean i can't think of a really good one in st john's county um but if, if that happens there how long until we start seeing it in duval and everywhere else too oh yeah you know they're going to jump on board and be like that's a great idea but it's funny you bring this up because i was listening to some guys that uh fish out in california and everybody on water has that and you know what their ramp fee is what's that 50 bucks oh no for good for lord Hey, how long is it good for? That day. Uh, no, no, no. No. Yeah. no. That doesn't like, surprise me with California, though. No, no, yeah, they're real straight. It's kind of, I guess that helps deter people, you know, from using the water because they want to keep everything pristine and everything. And you, I only think a two-stroke two, stra- a two stroke outboard is even allowed in that state. Good. When you think yeah. about, about how much, you know, fishermen put into the, the economy anyway, on top of, you know, all of our... <laughs> stuff that goes back into regulation and conservation and everything with it, everywhere that we get hit by the state normally and i have no problem with it but you know think about like today i went fishing for four hours and spent 40 bucks you know on gas food uh you know everything like that that's like how much you put into the local economy and that kind of thing uh but then you want to take more out of it come on guys Right. And uh, for those uh, that are joining us that didn't know, on the Atlantic coast, snapper season open. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all have already went out and tried to get you some snapper, but the uh, season opened up Friday and it's gone. It went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's closed now, tonight. And then Red Snapper will open back up next Friday and it'll go Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. And that'll be it. So you, for the. United States government is so nice to let us fish for a snapper for six days this year. And that is it. You got six days to catch the elusive endangered red snapper that took dad all of five minutes to get. Yeah, they are plentiful. Uh, you can expect to fill that limit quick because it's one per person per day. Uh, and there's not a size limit on it, right? I believe there is. I believe, uh, you know, correct me out there if I'm wrong, but I think it's 16 inches or bigger. Did my internet just go out again? Or are we just no, 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 no? I was typing and then Bubba got quiet, and so we had that awkward <laughs> silence. You know, like when you go on the first date and you, you know look at okay. 
<laughs> didn't happen. Okay. Yeah, I think I think my mic cut out there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, to, Slim says there's no size. So. Yeah, and the reason behind there being no size limit is because they don't want you pulling up small ones, throwing them back, and then them dying anyway. Right, uh, without venting them or fizzing them or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so that's why there's no size limit on them. Uh, All right. Uh, what about surf fishing, though? There ain't no season on that, thank goodness. So this is where we're going to turn it over to Alex. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's why I'm here. He's the surf fishing <laughs> king right now. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of surf fishing. If you guys want to check out my channel, uh, I just put out two videos. My brother, uh, Matthew from uh, Memphis, he came down and he wanted to catch a shark. So I took him out and uh, hooked him up into a three and a half foot sharp nose. Um, then we went out the next day, my most recent video, I went out and caught a, uh, 45 inch, um, black nose shark, which was a new species for me as well out at Mickler's beach. And, um, I've got two more videos to put out, uh, wish, uh, surf fishing, but I have caught everything this year. Uh, the surf fishing has been crazy. I've not had surf fishing. Like the last time I went surf fishing was probably, probably four. I mean, I went last year, but really going surf fishing, I probably went, uh, you know, really heavy about uh, four years ago. But uh, this year, I mean, I've caught sand trout, spotted sea trout, bonnet head, spots, croakers, whiting, redfish, ladyfish, you know, stingray, jack creval. Um, I was briefly hooked up into what I believe was a tarpon at Volano, uh, you know, ripped drag. It took a ton of line and then cut me off on the rocks out there. So I... I, in my mind, I want to say that was a tarpon, but I have no confirmation on that, unfortunately. But um, yeah, surf fishing has been really good. Uh, typically what I do is I'll take out some shrimp and on a uh, you know two tree rig. Um, and what that is, is that's the leader with the weight at the bottom and then two limbs coming out of it with uh, usually on opposite sides with hooks. And I'll throw, uh, I'll take a shrimp, I'll peel it, rip it in half, throw it on a one-aught or two-aught hook on the tree limbs, throw it out, catch a fish, cut that up, throw it on my bigger rods. And that's how I get those predatory fish. But, um, yeah, shrimp has been working very, very good for me this time of year. I've caught a uh, 28 inch red on half a piece of shrimp on a one out hook. So you can't, you can't really argue with that. <laughs> no, uh, you and Timmy would get along great saltwater fishing because both of y'all use those, what I call jewelry rigs. You know, you buy at Walmart and it's got the beads and all the shiny clips uh, and stuff hanging off of it. That's the question, too. I was like, Alex, do you use those things at Walmart? Because that's the easiest way to do it. Well, I mean, what I do is um, I do make my own uh, if I'm doing mono. But if I'm going for something that has teeth, which most saltwater fish do, is I actually buy them bulk, um, either from Academy or from Amazon, because I uh, go through them so quickly. Um, and I, you know, I get bit off and rubbed off so much, you know, with sharks and other stuff, just, you know, chasing it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's what I use. Uh, some people, you know, kind of give me grief for it cause I'm using two hooks instead of just one, but, uh, you know, to teach their own, I suppose. Uh, I, I use two hooks too. This clearly shows both that you have not watched my how to do it yourself video that has like 60,000 <sighs> views. No, oh, I definitely cool. have. Okay. That, that actually, you doing that gave me the idea for mine. And uh, mine definitely doesn't have that many views, but I was like, let me give them, you know, my, how, what I do. And uh, it was, oh, it was all over the place. I, I didn't know what I was doing with that, but like I knew what I was doing making it wise, but I've never made one of those tutorial videos <laughs> before. So it's, kind of all over the place but i you know yeah i, I was okay. shocked i couldn't believe like i'm like really there's nothing like this on youtube to show how to make saltwater rigs out of your main leader i mean mm -hmm. with two hooks and carolina rigs and everything but man i've gotten that's my most watched video and people were like oh thank you so much you've saved me so much money you know i'm getting all these comments uh saying that except for for timmy who is just stuck in his ways yes <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, if I'm going intercoastal, I'll run mono. Um, I usually do uh, 50 or 80 pound for uh, the leader material, you know, to make the tree limb or to make the tree and then the limbs off it is also, you know, either 50 or 80. But uh, if I'm going surf fishing, I mean, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've been cut off with sharks biting on the tree limb. So that's why I, I usually run wire and it's easier just to buy those, you know, pre-made. Yeah. Uh, the way I do it is I have parade is my main line and then i'll tie in a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and i'll probably put on about i don't know eight feet of that and that's what i'll make my rigs out of like i'll make my dropper loops and have two hooks come off of with the weight on the bottom mm -hmm. and i can slip on and off 
and I'll have those out there with shrimp to catch my, uh, you know, like my whiting and drum and things like that. And then like what you said, once I catch a whiting or, you know, some, or a jack or val or something, then I got a different rig that has wire leader on it and more of like a, uh, like a Carolina rig that slides for my shark or bigger fish with a live bait on there. And I yeah. have a 8,000 series pin that I use for that. I actually, um, I actually just got a, uh, Daiwa BG 8,000, uh, that my girl got me. And, uh, uh, so I used that for the first time today. That was pretty exciting, but, uh, I've only got 40 pound line on that. And I, a lot of people go really heavy with line in saltwater, um, especially with braid, uh, on my one, I have an Akuma Centara, uh, it's a 7,000 size reel and it's a 10 foot rod, but I, uh, I have I have 65 pound braid on that, but the problem I find with braid is when you're casting, unless you have one of those little gloves and it covers your uh, pointer finger and it goes down and wraps around your wrist, I actually find that I cut my hand on that a lot. So I use mono um, sometimes, just be, or most of the time, because it has uh, uh, you know the stretch and the capability, and I don't have to worry about it uh, cutting in as much, which I know is more of a personal issue, not the braid. So that that's just my own personal preference. I prefer mono over braid because of that reason. No, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, that's kind of weird. That I never heard it cutting, but that's that's cool. I got, I think, 50 on mine. And the reason I use braid is because, like, uh, it's, like I said, it's on bigger for bigger game, like tarpon or shark. And unless you have a really long leader material, their tails will just be hitting that mono or fluoro or whatever you got. And especially with sharks, they'll just wear it down like that. And then you won't even break off at the hook. You'll break off where their tails at which oh, yeah. braid will fight that a little bit better um well i've actually um i've been bit off since i've been going really hardcore with all my surf fishing and whatnot i've been bit off or you know rubbed off or whatever you want to call it broke off uh at least six times uh which is just a huge kick because you lose the hooks you lose the leader you lose the weight you lose everything it's 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 a pretty big setback i, I don't like it but um i what i've started doing is i've um started tying an 80 pound leader from my, so I've got my steel, you know, tree limb rig. I mm -hmm. tie that to 80 pound leader and then I tie that to my main line and I haven't had any problems since. Sounds like a good thing to me. Uh, Timmy, man, you ready to do some saltwater fishing or what? <laughs> Absolutely. freaking Lily. Uh, you guys are talking Spanish to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out there and do some saltwater fishing. Honestly, the last time I actually went was with you, Joe, when uh, we caught the sea trout. We weren't even after sea trout that time. So No, that was back in the winter. Was that January or something like that? It was like yeah, prime sheephead. <laughs> they were just... Uh, being stubborn and didn't want to come in they were staying like pretty much out there in the jetties where we really don't want to take a kayak out there no. but guys usually we do this for an hour we're already way over that so we're going <laughs> ahead and uh we'll open up to q a if you have any questions for myself bubba alex or tim just go ahead and light up the chat and we'll just talk about whatever you know any kind of questions you got kayaks fishing hooks salt water rigs whatever if you got any uh questions for alex specifically while we got him on here as a guest you know i'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer any questions of course, uh, of course. i last time uh you were talking about you say you just got a new reel the yep. last video you put up i made a comment on there i'm like wow it seems like every time i see a surf fishing video <laughs> there's more and more rods that seem to be in the video and he's yeah. like Shh. he's like don't tell my girl and she's That's the exactly one it. she that, that's a keeper if she's buying you rods. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I actually got her a pen passion. It's a combo that you can get. Uh, I got her the 4,000 size reel so we can use it for intercoastal bass. Kind of. It's a little big, but it'll work. And uh, as well as surf fishing for, you know, whiting and smaller stuff as well. But uh, yeah, we she got I got her a combo. She got me a reel, so can't argue with that. She uh, she watching this tonight, like in the other room or something? Yeah, I, th I think she is. She's uh she's laying over there, so she might uh, she might be watching it. She might not be. I don't know. <laughs> give her give her a little shout out on here. She'll think that's sweet. They get you some bonus points. Oh yeah, definitely. Shout out to my girlfriend Kimber for getting me that nice uh, BG eight thousand. It's I've been wanting that reel for so long. I didn't know I was getting it, and I'm super stoked for it. So I'm hoping to get some uh, some big old sharks for it. So that's it. But he's he's fishing for another one with that comment. <laughs> exactly. Bubba I mean, did the same always. thing. For uh, with his wife for Christmas, she got him a uh, bait ball and like some uh, like I think a whopper plopper and some other stuff. And he was he you had to hear that five times. Look what my wife got me. I'm catching this. I'm catching these bass. And what my wife got me. My wife's so awesome. <laughs> and she don't even watch my videos or nothing. 
I don't know. That's that's a, that's a good husband. And then Timmy takes his out, and she's like, "I don't want to touch it." <laughs> she she actually just kept coming in and out, making sure that I was still on the computer with you guys. <laughs> she's, she's, we call yeah. my nickname for Timmy is uh, Howdy, because every time I see him with his wife, I'm like, "How do you get her?" <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my little pet name for Tim once in a while. That's uh, the first time I've heard it though. Well, I told you that before. I told you that when we ate dinner at Mulligan's. Um, but no, you need it for real though, Tim. Like, uh, if, if I still had mine, I'd do more videos with her. But you need to get her out. You need to get your wife out there fishing again. Honestly, yeah, we were just talking about that. I was like, hey, why don't you come fishing out with me again? She's like, well, if you can get me a new fishing outfit, I will. Also, he oh. buys this girl a pole. You got to buy a whole outfit. Hey. What? Ask her. I, I just want to know what does a fishing outfit look like? I was I was I was gonna ask that. Let's go ahead and find out. Oh crap, you guys are seeing it here live. Here with you guys with uh -oh. this always wearing some kind of jersey over here. I mean <laughs> you wanna ask me what a fishing outfit looked like every time I get on the boat with these two jokers. Mine's just a dry fit shirt. He's yeah. got the jersey. He's trying to look like a the, yeah, All right, hey, let him talk. Let him talk. Her question. Ask a question, Joe. Yeah, what uh, what exactly does a fishing outfit look like, or what does it uh, entail? Like, what would this fishing outfit be for you? Oh, for me? Yeah. So, it has to be colorful, you know, and bright and happy looking. Well, you get it. So we're not gonna have any fish to catch because we're scaring them off. <laughs> So we're talking like we're talking about like sky blue or like a pinkish blue or green yes, or yes. have you seen the fishing section at Dick's? It's great. It's all rainbow colors. That I was waiting great. for Alex to chime in on that one. I okay, so I actually used to work at Dick's Sporting Goods, which is what I was talking about when I said I used to sell kayaks. And all that stuff is most of the stuff there is designed to catch fishermen, not fish. And all that stuff, that's all that is 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 expensive clothes for people to buy their their significant others so they'll, they'll go fishing with them there so. it is right there <laughs> it's proof right there if it's all... pink i'm not going fishing see there it is hey the, hey they got the pen passion at dicks dude that's what i just got my girl it's pink uh, the rod the oh, real yeah. everything <laughs> absolutely thanks honey y'all could have matching jerseys <laughs> you could have matching jerseys you could get yeah. yourself a pink one by the way, I can't call it Deadpool. Whoever said, I heard him say Deadpool. I was trying to get Anna in here. I can't call it that because I promised the company that I wouldn't say that, even though that was kind of the goal. Yeah. Uh, now that you guys have seen Timmy's wife, now you know why I say he's howdy. I, I, I can see what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nothing, yeah. Nothing but love for you, Timmy, man. We love you. Yeah, Listen, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real sad when you have to leave to go for uh, school over in Pensacola. But yeah, you're you're gonna have to learn to like salt water over there, or your videos are just not gonna show up. I'm gonna try and get in contact with 30 miles out because this is getting ridiculous. PFG Academy all day says Slim. Slim has been with us the whole time, man. So Slim. big shout out for Slim One Done. He has been here since minute one. He's sticking it out. He is, man. Now that's that's a freaking that's viewer right good. there. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we all retire, are we going to like buy an actual bait shop and we can do this from inside of one for real? We need to do one when we're all in the same room. Oh, now I feel better. Slim says he's just bored. Wow, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's honest. Well, he was yeah. bored, but now he's not because he's watching us. I think that's what he means. I'll go, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> He says, I'm all, what? If talk fresh water, I'm out. Yeah, we're done with fresh water, Slim. We're, we're on to hot pink combos. Tyler, that's, uh, <laughs> Tyler, that's why we said when we retire, so we could just lose money in that. <laughs> right. It'll, all, it'll be the one bay shop in town that's like always closed because we'll always be out fishing, except for on uh, live chat nights. Right. But uh, Alex, definitely glad to have you with us. I think we're going to wrap it up. And uh, glad to definitely be able to get Timmy back on here. And once again, sorry about us making, you know, not being able to do this last month because, you know, 
duties to the country and all. I had to go answer the call for two weeks, <laughs> which uh, also I'm missing out on snapper season because of the military. See, when they talk about sacrifices, they mean fishing as well. Yep. And uh, so definitely thank you all for joining us and making this a great bait shop talk live from me, Joe, at Dennis Moore Outdoors, Timmy, Alex, and Bubba. We definitely thank you all for watching. Oh, we got a last minute question from Jenny. It says, what is the best fish to eat, saltwater and freshwater? Okay. See, that's how you keep us on just a little bit longer. You come in there with that last minute question. Ugh. Oh. Uh, All right, that's my, dang it. Me, yeah, me and me and Timmy agree on that. My my favorite saltwater fish to eat would be mahi mahi slash dolphin slash dorado, whatever you want to call them. That's my favorite saltwater fish to eat. My favorite freshwater fish to eat would be between rainbow trout or speckled perch or what a lot of northern people call them, uh, black crappie. Is uh, down here in Florida we call them speckled perch, and the bluegill back in the tank back here are getting nervous and running around because we're now we're talking about eating fish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my favorite salt water is probably, um, I really like shark. Honestly. Uh, I, I love a good shark, uh, grill it up in some teriyaki. That's fantastic. Um, any kind of shark and then fresh water is, uh, probably, probably uh, black crappie is really good. I really like that. Bubba. Oh, I'm trying to think of a saltwater one, man. They're all good. Well, They're, I know you like those yellowmouth trout. I do. I do like yellowmouth trout. That is, uh, you know, you go yellowmouth fishing, you go fishing for lunch. Uh, trout in general, uh, I guess, may, might be mine as far as, you know, what I'm catching. Uh, yeah, it's also good uh, for saltwater. Freshwater, I'm going to be the odd man out over here. Uh, both these, these two guys hate hearing me talk about catching this fish, but I just love to eat it. I uh, <laughs> love eating gar. I love eating gar. Gar tastes like gator if you've never had it. Uh, cube it, fry it. It's awesome. It's fun to catch because they're big. Never heard that. Oh, it's awesome. I, I'll take it with me one day, Alex. Uh, Let's do it, man. Dog day. <laughs> it's an adventure for sure. It's like it's going it. fishing with a turtle, man. Yeah, yeah. He he. Maybe we get some live action. <laughs> live action. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll get you back in the swamp and dog days of summer if the bass ain't biting. I guarantee you the gar will. Um, yeah, Slim, Slim saying pomps and pompano. Yeah, I, I highly yeah. agree about pompano. That's like a freaking pompano's delicacy. Pompano's pretty good. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is like a delicacy. Uh, was it yeah. Captain Larry Finch? Uh, if you guys are on Facebook, and he's like a local surf fishing legend, Captain Larry Finch. He go, He's a commercial pompano fisherman, and he goes up and down Florida chasing pompano. Like He literally follows the schools of pompano up and down the coast of Florida, uh, catching and selling. He always gives a report. Really nice, really nice guy. Uh, Tim, on to you. I know you're from the great north of Kentucky, so I'm sure you have a different might have a different taste. Um, it's I don't really eat fresh water. Um, actually, I don't at all, really. Wow. Sorry, Jenny. Uh, Tim is no help. <laughs> I know. I know Tim had sea trout one day because he had to fight to get it in the house. So, I mean, that's the salt water. I mean, salt water. I'll eat anything. Uh, there's a restaurant right up the road that i've been trying different fish and then i don't I'll, recommend you need a fresh or a saltwater fish and i'll actually do it myself but uh flounder's good um uh, i tried grouper it's different but it's okay uh mahi mahi is definitely my favorite though see, see uh restaurant fish tastes way different oh yeah than uh yeah. fish that you you know you catch in the wild because a 100%. lot of that restaurant fish is farmed mm. and it's not the same as uh, catching the same. Plus, they can say whatever they want. They can, like all you're seeing is a fillet on your plate. You yeah. know, a lot of times you say like, okay, I went to I went to uh, the grocery store one time and they have those prepackaged fillets. Well, I was trying to eat healthier and I was eating more fish than what I was catching at the time. And it said flounder on the bag. I'm like, oh, let me let me see what check this flounder out. And then, of course, most of us that fish know what a flounder fillet looks like. If you fillet it as one big fillet, it's going to be really tall and really wide. Or if not, and you do like what I do, and you fillet it in quarters by cutting it down the middle and quartering it out, then it's going to be more of a skinnier fillet. This was like Alaskan Pollock cod all day. So, yeah, everybody's like, oh, yeah, flounder doesn't taste that good. I'm like, what flounder are you eating? <laughs> and they say from the store. Yep. And that, that, that's... that grocery store tilapia flounder. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like in a restaurant, is is totally different than eating it. Yeah. Cobia. Cobia would be out there too. Up there for me. I just saltwater fish are like my grocery store. Uh, oh, yeah. I, you know, I really don't eat fresh water, but saltwater, I'm not, I'm not keeping any prisoners. They're, they're, you know, they're going on ice if they're legal size. That's where I get my groceries mm-hmm. is the saltwater. Uh, stuff flounder. Jenny said flounder is always a favorite for sure. Stuff flounder is like a delicacy. I love, I need to learn how to cook stuff flounder. That would be a great catch and cook video. My first time making stuff flounder. I, I, I don't know how well it's going to turn out so that you might not want to copy me. Kind of an unpopular opinion. Uh, that Jack Creval we caught, uh, my girlfriend actually caught it. Uh, we decided to eat it, and I had always heard it was a trash fish, but uh, I actually really liked it. I thought it was delicious. So, kind of uh, Marty's Offinger, uh, Marty's Offinger would agree with you on that because he did it too. He had the same concept. He's like, people always say it's a trash fish, but he's like, you know what? I'm gonna find out for myself. But what he did was, is he bled it as soon as he got it. He as soon as he got it, he got he got the bloodline out. <laughs> And then he said it was real, real nice meat. It kind of was like tuna. That's exactly and, what I said in my video. It's very firm meat. I did not bleed it. I did not do that. Uh, that was a mistake. Learn for the future. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a great fish. So I'm definitely, I, I want to catch more. I thought they were delicious. I got one in the freezer, but I don't recommend eating it. I'm saving that for a shark cook. <laughs> it's been in there for about a, a couple months now. Yeah, yeah. Elias, Elias V, he'd eat freaking catch and cooks everything like it sand fleas lizard fish ever any kind of thing Upper you can fish. Think of. i've seen all kinds of stuff that he's done yeah, it's crazy he's tried up benito which i didn't know there was a difference but i think they i think they call him a false out al- albacore up north and we don't have them down here uh but yeah oh benita he said was no good he said it's just it, there's no way around trying to make that taste good he, he said that's definitely a trash fish which is a shame because they they look like a tuna. They're more plentiful than tuna. They're all over the place here, but uh, I guess the only thing they're good for is shark bait. But all right, I'm gonna try this one more time. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, pop up questions, but I wasn't gonna leave you guys hanging. Uh, thank you for definitely for joining us. Uh, check out our channels. You got Nano Four Fishing with Alex, Bubba Outdoors with Bubba, Tim Kidwell Outdoors with Timmy. And then you got myself, of course, hosting this, which, you know, if, you're, if you just came across this, please subscribe and leave it a thumbs up. Uh, Dinsmore Outdoors. And we do this every second Sunday of every month. The only reason we didn't do it last Sunday is because, you know, obviously we had, uh, I had, we had people issues and we were all over the place. But normally it's every second Sunday of every month at 7 p.m. So, Hopefully we can see you guys next month. Uh, there will be some more action. Be looking for our videos. Like I said, I'm putting up a surf fishing video real soon. And we'll see you there for the next one. Remember, I'm Joe with Dinsmore Outdoors, and we do more in Dinsmore. We'll see you next time, guys. See you later. See you guys. See you. Bye.